This episode of Poker Stories is brought to you by Best Bet Jacksonville, the largest poker room in the state of Florida with more than 60 poker tables and over 20 other table games. The popular card room is home to Best Bet Live, which streams cash game and tournament action on Twitch, YouTube, and Facebook Live. Best Bet also has two other properties, one in Orange Park and a brand new facility that just opened in St. Augustine. This October and November, Best Bet Jacksonville will once again host the Card Player Poker Tour, which will feature a $3,000 buy-in main event starting November 11th. For more information, check out cardplayerpokertour.com or bestbetjacks.com, as well as bestbet underscore jacks on Twitter. Hi everyone, this is two-time World Poker Tour champion Jonathan Little, and I want to tell you about my training site, pokercoaching.com. Poker coaching is the place to be if you want to increase your poker skills and learn to crush the games. It's the only place to quickly increase your win rate with active learning so you can achieve your full poker potential without having to hire an expensive coach. Right now, podcast listeners can score a free membership by visiting pokercoaching.com slash card player and get access to top training tools like our interactive hand quizzes, our 7, 14, and 30-day challenges, and a roster of elite coaches such as Matt Affleck, James Romero, Burke Draftganger Stevens, Michael Acevedo, and dozens of others. Again, that's pokercoaching.com slash card player to get your free membership right now. Poker Stories is an audio series that features casual interviews with some of the game's best players and personalities. Each episode highlights a well-known figure in the poker world and dives deep into their favorite tales, both on and off the felt. Hello and welcome to Poker Stories, a podcast brought to you by Card Player, the Poker Authority, and hosted by me, Julio Rodriguez. This is episode number 141, featuring sideline reporter, commentator, TV host, and uh, just general jack of all trades for Poker Go, Mr. Jeff Platt. Now, uh, Jeff has the typical moneymaker poker story, discovering the game with friends while still in high school back in Dallas, Texas, but it would be more than a decade before poker would become part of his career. After graduating from USC, Jeff took a job reporting sports in Jackson, Mississippi, before then working for ESPN covering his hometown Dallas Mavericks. He then joined a San Antonio station, primarily focused on the San Antonio Spurs. And uh, during this interview, you'll hear his stories of rubbing elbows with Dirk Nowitzki and also how he felt uh, about asking coach Greg Popovich questions during press conferences. Uh, Despite his success as NBA media, however, Jeff was eager to combine his love for broadcasting and poker. He had continued to play cards on the side, taking trips to local casinos wherever he was stationed, and even managed to make two deep runs in the WSOP main event during his summers off. He took a shot and moved to Las Vegas, soon landing a job with Poker Go. He started with shows like Friday Night Poker and The Big Blind, while working events like the World Series of Poker, the Super High Roller Bowl, Poker Masters, and the U.S. Poker Open. His newest show, No Gamble, No Future, airs on Poker Go every Tuesday, and past episodes are available on demand. As a player, Jeff has made a couple of WSOP final tables himself, and most recently won an event at the Venetian for six figures. Anyway, that is enough intro. Here is my conversation with Jeff Platt. I'm here with the one and only Jeff Platt. Jeff, how you doing? I'm good, man. How are you? Good to be on with you. I'm I'm great. Um, I gotta ask you the question on everybody's mind. Mm. Did she cheat? (laughs) What? What what in the world could you possibly be referring to? I don't even think we need to talk about the setup to it or what happened. I think uh, everyone knows what we're talking about. Yeah. the topic that's taken over the poker world everyone's got an opinion seems to be 50 50 split what are you uh... well uh, i mean you're gonna hate mine because uh, i i just continue to go back (laughs) and forth same and i think yeah plenty of people in the poker world would say the same thing and so uh, all i can say is that I'm, i'm glad hustler casino live is 
going through with a, a full scale investigation. I look forward to seeing what their findings yeah. are. That's my very uh, cliche, um, professional, right down the middle answer. But I already got involved to it once in the, the Twitter streets in this, yeah. and it was just a very light comment, and I already got both right. sides of it. So I'm and... good. I'm good with just kind of kind of staying in the middle, sitting back and yeah. waiting until the results. Stay in the out. middle. You can't yeah. be wrong if you don't pick <laughs> yeah, right, side. Right. True. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know which outcome I'm rooting for. Uh, and that is obviously that there was no cheating. Of course. Yeah, of course. that would be the best case scenario for poker. But who knows? I, you know, you guys tell us. Uh, let's talk about Jeff. Go okay. back to Dallas, Texas. Can do that. Were you born in Dallas? I was. Okay. Yes, sir. Good old Dallas, Texas. Born and raised in mm-hmm. Dallas, Texas. Um, and you did what every typical Dallas, Texas boy did was join the choir, right? Yeah, yeah that's good research. I, I, mean, re- I, know, I just read that you I know were a choir you, boy. I know you come well prepared. So that was the question <laughs> in sixth grade is you, had, you have to do band or orchestra or choir. And you I, had to pick one of those to. three? You had to pick one. Maybe, what a musical school. Yeah, yeah, maybe maybe we're a little weird. But I, I liked it, and so I'm like, can't play an instrument, so band's out. Can't play an instrument, so orchestra's out. Just just throw me in choir and make magic happen. And as weird as this sounds, I credit <laughs> choir and this like little pop choir group thing that I did in senior high school yeah. with broadcasting. I think that led me to broadcasting because it just got me comfortable How were the pipes? on stage. Uh, okay, probably okay. average. Probably, it may be, maybe slightly above average, mm-hmm. but hey, the ratio is pretty good in high school choir. I mean, there are a lot of girls, oh, yeah. there aren't that many guys, <laughs> so if you're somewhat normal, and I'm not saying I'm even there, but you're, you're going to do all right. So I was at choir, choir I was great I felt the same way about being a guy in theater in college. It's the same thing, right? Yeah. Even the, even the other guys there weren't competition because they had other interests. You know what I mean? Right, right, right. <laughs> but yeah, it was... Great ratio, as you'd say. Yeah. Alto, tenor, um, <laughs> baritone? More, more baritone. And okay. then I would also MC the events. So I would host oh, the events. So again, that kind great of great experience. I mean, it's kind of like theater. I did a couple of shows. But, you know, you do a show on a stage in front of an audience, whether it's six people or 600. Yeah. And don't you think you just naturally become more and more comfortable in front of groups of people moving forward? Yeah. There's, and especially if you start early. My daughter's in a band right now. And... We put her out on stage at six, yeah. or seven, and now she doesn't even understand what nerves are. You know, right, what I mean? she's right. Just, she was born on stage. Through it. Yeah. So if you do it when you're a it. kid, nothing but comfort, right? So like, how how good were you guys as a as a group? What were you well, I would say we were entertaining. I mean, you know, they would take <laughs> us to the nursing homes of the world and maybe <laughs> okay. um, a receptive yeah, audience. We'd go we'd go uh, caroling, and that's that's about it. But we were good. It was a good time. It was great. Um, it helped me kind of, you know, break out of my shell a little bit with, with the hosting. And, you know, I think you have to be a little bit um, more social in, in those areas. So, again, I mean, it's just like I I think about this a decent amount of times. Like I just have to credit choir with where I'm at now in a poker broadcasting career. Again, as strange as that may sound. We'll talk about poker later. Okay. 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 Right. Stop uh, was, relating. Was there, <laughs> was there an encore hit that you guys brought the, da- the house down with every time? <laughs> I don't think so. That's a good question. I don't know we had a staple. I kind of remember us having a real nice remix mm-hmm. of uh, the hit song, Turn the Beat Around, from Paul Abdul. Love that. Um, and so... All I, acapella? I all acapella. And I think us <laughs> baritones and basses just had the beat of it. So it didn't even get any of the words. But, but you know, you, you felt it. You felt the music. It, it was good. Hear. Percussion. Yeah, yeah, that was it. That was it. That's what but they're talking think, about I when they the say girls, percussion. The tenors would would sing that. Yeah, but that was a sick song. I'm this is saying, where we insert the drop of you, or your a performance of yours. If you can go way back in the day and uh, find that, that's about as much of a performance <laughs> as you're gonna get now. Maybe, maybe your parents have a copy somewhere. They might. Could, they might have some old uh, old DVDs, maybe even VHSs from way back. So in the were day. you like a child ham? Like, did you? Always want attention in the spotlight where you're a performer? Uh, no, no, I really didn't want it. And I, I still don't like it, in the, as weird as this <laughs> sounds, in the, the small groups, kind of. I mean, as you can tell by now, I love being on camera. But in, in small groups, it's, it's always been a little uh, weird to me. So that's probably why this pop choir group, whatever, show choir, was, was so important to me. Because you just you spend a lot of your time in front of a lot of small groups of people you know yeah. there are 12 
96 year old women watching you and you come comfortable in front of them and then you're in you're in front of 30 uh eight year olds and you're trying to entertain them so uh, i think that made me more comfortable with the spotlight but i still haven't gotten to a point where i'm totally at ease with something like that right, we'll get to poker now because uh you're Cut. 36 right Yes. So you were Very old. senior in high school when Moneymaker hit, maybe? maybe yeah, yeah, I, yeah, junior in high school. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly okay. right. And that's when uh, my friends and I saw it on ESPN, and we just started playing sit Yeah, because I thought the, the misconception that I had when mm-hmm. you first showed up, if, you know, a few years ago on TV, it's been more than a few years, pandemic. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> pandemic has slowed time down. But, you know, the, the, the perception I had was, oh, here's a newcomer to poker. And yeah. it turns out, yeah. no, you were in at the boom. You know what I mean? Just right. For, it's, it's, on other that, it's that cliche moneymaker story that you you always hear, right? Yeah. It's like, oh, yeah, I saw moneymaker play, so figured I'd play. Yeah. Basically, that's that's what it was for me. And then I took it a little bit more seriously once I turned 18 and got to play at Choctaw and Windstar. I went to school at uh, USC so you could go to Morongo, which is about an hour and a half away. Okay. Once I was 21, I lived in L.A. and I could play at the bike and commerce and and then you could play on Full Tilt, Poker Stars, Ultimate Bet. Yeah. So I started to get um, really into it at a, at a but relatively young age. on the side, right? It was always never on the side, yeah. A, a career consideration? No, no. Never thought about it as a career. And who knows if I had caught fire in you know, the one yeah. World Series of Poker event I would play a year and shipped it or something. That maybe that would have altered the course of my life. But never really considered taking it professionally it was always on the side play once or twice a week never study i don't know was studying a thing back then like could you study there was like six books card runners (laughs) yeah and the books like the helmuth books the harrington books helmuth is like if you don't have eights are better just fold (laughs) yeah some of those old school books are hilarious yeah they're they're good they're good i wonder if like poker were ever were ever psycho back to the to the uh the state where that is a good strategy again well, I mean, not to get too nitty gritty and into and... the GTO streets, but like you're seeing a lot more folds of the kind of the fours, the fives, the sixes. We saw winter fold sevens pre just open fold it. Yeah, um, right. Pre yesterday in our 25k at the Poker Masters. So yeah, maybe the maybe stuff it's you saw in the 90s, a little bit. <laughs> right? <laughs> when right. people only played Ace Queen or better. Yeah, 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 exactly. So maybe maybe you got a little bit of that. Yeah, it's for a game sure. that continues to evolve, to say the least. All right, so you're keeping poker on the side. Yeah, keeping an eye on it. And uh, you go to California mm-hmm. for school. It's a change, right, from Texas? Slight change. Yeah. Yeah, it was either, uh, for me, Syracuse or USC. To, to <laughs> you wanted to go extreme. To the yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I visited SC first, which was great, as you might imagine. Stepped off the plane in, in Syracuse, and it's snowing. Like, oh, you know man. what? We're good. I think, I think the, decision, yeah. the decision has been made. So, yeah, it was Southern LA California for me. California yeah. wins on weather. Uh, all right, so you major in broadcast journalism. It uh-huh. sounds like you knew what you wanted to do from the beginning. I was pretty sure uh, from the beginning because, you know, as a kid, and a lot of kids would say this, you grow up wanting to be involved in, in sports or playing sports. I mean, this is this is how unprofessional this guy is. Oh, he's holding know? the trophy. Brent Hanks just Brent walked Hanks into the... Just we're recording this at uh, Poker Go, by the way. My colleague, Thanks, my broadcast partner. There's Anything you would like to say? Pop, well, I mean, you, you should focus on your show. Well, how can I? You're walking in the door. Didn't you want us to go fast on this one? Now you're yeah, distracting speed us. Speed it up. <laughs> pretty, pretty valiant performance by me on the podcast, considering you interrupted. But I'm still like fighting through it. Yeah. A lot of people are saying this, this, this is, is a great still usable. This is still usable. All no, we're gonna keep all of this you in. Edit your podcast? The, the less, Not the better. With this. No, yeah. Oh. Can't you can't edit. You you cannot edit Just out. Hurry up! We have a important business to do. <laughs> <Right. laughs> he wants to go gamble or something. I'm sure. <laughs> Um, All right, that was uh, Brent Hanks. You are your partner in audio, partner in crime <laughs> on No Gamble, No Future, in our Poker Go events and and uh, many different things. And uh, yeah, broadcast journalism. You know, wanted to be in sports. Knew from the age of six onwards that I could never play sports professionally. Wanted six? to work. In your the, dream well, died. I, at the six? dream dies very early. <laughs> That's so cru- very cool. Very early on, on the. Someone pulled you aside wood. in Little League and was like, Jeff. Yeah, yeah. yeah you don't you. have it. You don't have it. <laughs> And so then, to then I thought maybe work in sports, you know, be a GM, pull off the trades. And then I thought, no, I kind of like telling stories. And I think broadcast journalism and sports just uh, just fit. So just dove into 
into sports broadcasting in okay. school. And the first gig was Mississippi. Yeah, good old Jackson, Mississippi. Yeah, um, another change. That's that's a big change <laughs> as well to go from the number two market to I think it was ninety or so. But it's a great job out of college yeah. because it's well, right a, out of college. You're just like, who will take me? Right? Exactly. You send you send your resume tape all over. I think I was like. The Baton Rouge news director emailed me back and told me I was top five. And I was like, yes, you know, I'm really, I'm really making it in this world. Uh, so to end up in Jackson, a smaller market where you could just get a lot of your mistakes out of the way and learn mm-hmm. a lot about business and try to develop your writing and your storytelling and your interviewing. I think that helped my career uh, immensely. Jackson is Ole Miss or? Jackson is, you know, maybe two and a half hours from Ole Miss. Two and a half hours from Mississippi State. Oh, okay. So, so it's, you're covering those SEC are the two, football, yeah. but you, you, it's a drive every time. Yeah. But you're also it's also two and a half hours to Tunica, two and a half hours <laughs> to Biloxi. So the kind of kept it worked the poker, out for you. Yeah, yeah, kept the poker thing going. Poker kept bit. staying poker on the side. Poker kept popping up. Yeah. yeah, as a common theme throughout my life was it was poker. What did you do for the gig? Was it just desk stuff? It was a uh, yeah, sports anchor and reporter on the news. So you know, ten o'clock rolls around. 10:20, it's time for sports. Mm-hmm. I would either do the anchoring or I'd be out in the field reporting on Did it. Did they ever send you any crazy like field reporting assignment? I would say it, the the craziest it got would be to go to one of those SEC football games. I did convince my news director to let me go cover a poker tournament in Biloxi, Mississippi, and I think I interviewed Robert Williamson the Third okay. and Cloney Gowan. Wow! Which I mean, to interview Cloney Two Gowan, and, yeah, and to interview <laughs> Cloney in 2009 or whatever. When mm-hmm. I mean, she's at the peak of her popularity. You know, I, I was a big fan, of course. Um, that was, yeah, I, I remember that. That was that was probably the wildest one, especially um, in the news director's mind. He's like, "Poker? You want to cover a poker tournament? Why would I send you to do that?" And I'm sure I did a terrible job in just DJing the whole time while I was there, but I think the story... <laughs> but that was your first poker right. gig. Yeah, that was my first poker interview. Cool. Was, was back then. All right, so Jackson, you say bye-bye, and mm-hmm. then you go back home to Dallas, right? Yeah, so I did some sports radio work in Dallas for the ESPN radio affiliate there. And mainly that was, you know, the updates at top and bottom of the hour, what your local sports centers are like, just okay. your one-minute quick hits, hosting shows a little bit, and covering the Mavs a decent amount of the time. But by covering, not not super intense, more like go to the games, which is awesome. Talk to the players in the locker room after, which is also awesome. But mainly just kind of holding the mic out there. Yeah. And asking a question here and there, becoming more comfortable asking, it was Rick Carlisle at the time who was coach, becoming more comfortable asking Jim Carlisle. Himself. Yeah, 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 exactly, exactly. <laughs> um, and, and, and talking to the players. That's your team, though, right? The Mavs. That is my team. So it was kind of like that's like a entering, little boy's dream. You're entering yeah. dream job territory. Then when I got to talk with the Mavs and and stand by Dirk in the locker room, I mean that yeah. that started to get pretty cool. They weren't they weren't good when I was there. I started the year after they won the title in 2011, um, in that lockout year actually when Lamar Odom was there, and and that was a a total trip. So they weren't good, but the experience was really yeah, cool. Yeah, that's got to be pink yourself like this is exactly. the team i grew up rooting for right. you know and i have I mean? a media pass i can be here and, and be working quote mm-hmm. unquote but just be at a mavs game covering That's the team and talking to the players golden Sweet. ticket Sign golden me up. ticket yeah. i like the mavs a lot I'm a, I'm a heat fan i grew up in miami and i know a lot of heat fans that do not like the oh, mavericks and i know do. a lot of dallas fans that do not like miami fans. myself included yeah. yeah people are still not forgiving Dwayne wade for those free throws that's right and the officiating but, but i okay. always love dirk I mean, how yeah. could you not look? Yeah. I had a Dirk jersey. I would, you know, and my high school, we were the Mavericks. So, oh, sick. Yeah, okay. I was I always liked identified I mean, Dirk, with that. Horse. Dirk's absolute legend and and a humble superstar, which is yeah. kind of rare. Yeah. Any any cool stories interviewing those guys? Well, not really, because I didn't get you know that one on one access. It was because all game I was, related. Yeah, I was just the sports radio reporter, and so yeah, it'd be after the game. How do you feel you matched up with? Dwayne Wade afterward, you know, yeah. you know, so it's stuff like that. So no, no one moment really stands out. I, this was when OJ Mayo was on the Mavs for a little bit, and USC's I covered, uh, yeah, OJ and Mayo, I covered yeah. him in college mm-hmm. uh, for his for his one season there. So we had a little bit of a connection. So I thought it was cool to kind of become, I won't say friends, but friendly with him yeah, in the yeah. locker room. And um, I got to know Brandon Wright a little bit. Um, we became friends, still follow each other on Twitter, stuff like that. So that, that's that's always cool to kind of develop a relationship with 
with an athlete. So why leave that dream gig and then go work for the rivals across yeah, town? Yeah, that's a good question. <laughs> uh, I'd wanted to get back into TV, mm-hmm. um, and I had I'd really enjoyed that format and telling stories on air and doing more of the one-on-one sit-down interviews, kind of like we are. Obviously not in podcast form, but this was an outlet that could give you five minutes to do an interview, which was rare in, in local radio or even local TV at the time. And it was more hoops intensive. So 90% of the job was following the Spurs around. Yeah. So in the playoffs, you got to travel and just go wherever they go and cover those playoff games. And we're talking about the Spurs, man. We're talking about an unbelievable organization. Guys, I hate it, of course, just because I was rooting against them. <laughs> but to be able to chat with those guys and to get some one-on-one scenarios with them. And then, of course... Those were good years for the Spurs. Those were really good years. Yeah. It was after they won the title as well. So yeah. maybe I'm just the ultimate jinx. And I just come <laughs> in and cool a team off a little bit. But they still had really good teams. I mean, still going to the playoffs every year, of course. Going to the Western Conference Finals one year against Golden State. So to talk to those guys, and then most importantly for my career, to talk to Pop, to talk to Greg Popovich, mm-hmm. you know, one of the most legendary coaches uh, in, in the NBA, that that was something special for sure. He makes reporters pee themselves, so I don't understand. Man, I was close. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, he's legendary. I mean, yeah. Anybody who's seen Greg Popovich, uh, coach of the Spurs, still, right? Yeah, Still going still. strong. Um, yeah, I thought he was considering retirement. Um, anyway... The guy does not give great interview answers unless you get him with a good question. Right, and that's uh, that's why I, part of why I respect him so much. If you do ask him a good question, he will usually give you yeah. a good answer. If you ask a poorly thought out, simplistic, yes or no question, or like a "How do you feel about that win, Coach?" <laughs> you know, you just are not going to receive a good reply. That's ninety five percent of the questions in the post game. Exactly, now. that's true. <laughs> so it's naturally going to make you a better interviewer, a better reporter, yeah. right? When you know that you can't just ask a throwaway because he won't give you a throwaway answer. Athletes will. You know, if you ask Tim Duncan, uh, "What led to that win tonight?" He, he'd give you the fifteen second. Well, you know, we just played really hard. The effort was there, et cetera, et cetera. Team, team win. You know, yeah, as a team win, everybody <laughs> contributed. Blah blah blah. But Pop, Pop w- would not give you that. He would say, "Well." We scored more than the other team, so that led to the win. And you're like, "Already then?" Yeah, we had more points at the end. That's right. How that's, it works. That was a common <laughs> pop answer to questions like that. Man, yeah. that's brutal. It's like, and you're just like, "I already have the skeleton written and you know ready to go." And... Yeah, yeah. He made well, you feel, feel some pain for sure. Any cool stories from time with the Spurs? I mean, the, what stands out to me personally was the first time I asked Pop a question. Okay. Because, you know, I went to three games before I could even build up the courage to ask him something. Because you, you said it. You just see him just absolutely decimate reporters. And so I was ready for it. I'm holding this boom, big boom mic. So, like, you could see I'm, like, shaking. And my voice is <laughs> shaky. And he, Pop had just finished talking about uh, Tiago's splitters game that night. And he was okay. talking about splitter on the defensive end. I knew that he was 8 for 10 from the field in 20 minutes and so i said what made him so efficient on the offensive end tonight which i still to this day don't think is a terrible question but yeah but also i'm the new guy right so he's probably gonna light me up a little bit if he hadn't seen me before if he had seen me there a couple times and knew is my first question so i ask him that and he just stares just right at me just for a good five seconds with no, nothing said which five seconds is a long time right you're yeah. in a room with 15 20 other reporters right now five seconds D- no 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 because it'd just be so <laughs> awkward <laughs> it'd, be, it'd be so awkward and so he's staring at me for five seconds and then he, he finally says he's Shh, i i don't know how to answer that and just turned around and walked Brutal. away press conference is over Brutal. on my accord and so then, oh, not only did he not answer it, right, he he's walked gone. away from everybody. So I ruined, I ruined it for for everybody. It feels like hazing. And so that stuck with <laughs> me for a while. But like you said a little bit earlier, it does make you feel better when you get a good answer when you ask a good yeah, question, right? right? To make so, you work for the truth. Yeah. So I think I've learned to ask better questions, and I, I hope that that is that's translated to the poker world. All right. So Spurs gig ends, and you just decide to jump into poker. or...? Kinda. I'd kept in touch with Dan Gotti, executive producer here at Poker Go, after uh, a couple of deep runs in the main. Don't don't mean to brag. We were gonna get just, to those. Yeah, results. yeah. I'm just throwing that out there. And so uh, every six months or a year or so, I'd be like, hey, I'm here. You know, just just in case you're yeah. trying something out. And back in 2015, 2016, it was more like, you know, 
we don't have anything yet, but we might in the future. Yeah. Stay in touch. This was like <laughs> as Poker Central was starting. Right. And they were building Poker Go. And so I'd stayed in touch with him because it, if I've always been in sports broadcasting and always played poker, why don't I try to merge those two passions together right. and become a poker broadcaster? So my contract's coming up in March of 2018. In December, I reach out to Dan. I say, hey, you know, I'm actually coming to Las Vegas on a trip with friends, which was a total lie. Yeah. I was not planning on coming to Vegas. I just wanted to see what he said. So I'm like, love to stop by, say hi, um, audition for you guys if you would like. And he says, uh, he says, yeah, you can come by and audition. And so I said, perfect, perfect. I'll be there whenever. My friends and I will be there uh, on this weekend in December. So I come by. This was when they were still building this, this Poker Go studio. We mm-hmm. had the temporary set up in Aria. And I go to lunch with Dan and Maury. So I get to meet Maury Eskandani, the Poker Hall of Famer, the Poker Go president right now, absolute legend. And we chat at lunch for a while, mostly not about me as just Maury had really cool stories that I wanted to listen to. Of Lots course, of stories. As you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and so then we go in the booth, and Dan says, here's the 100K Poker Masters from last year. Um, we're going to take out the commentary, and I want you to just do commentary. For wow, they had a little test set up. Yeah, yeah, they, they had cool. it all ready to go. And he's like, I'm going to get you a, an analyst, a color commentator. And so in walks Brent Hanks, <laughs> oh, that's who great. had also not done really any broadcasting. I think he had done Poker After Dark solo once or or something like that. So he walked in. I hadn't met him, but I had listened to him via the, I think at the time it was the Poker Central podcast. So we do 10 minutes. I think we do fine. You know, I'd love to have that tape because looking back on it, it's probably uh, absolutely horrendous. So again, I keep in touch with Dan and Maury. Thanks for having me out. They say, yeah, that was great, blah, blah, blah. Don't hear anything really. Month goes by, two months goes by. And then we're at like March of 2018 where my contract's coming up in San Antonio. So it's either re-sign there or just go for it in Vegas. And I, I emailed Dan. I said, I'm just curious because my contract's coming up here. Do you have anything for me? And he says, maybe. And I'm like, maybe it's good enough for me. Wow. Uh, so I just kind of made that move. And I got in touch with Sarah Herring at Poker News after that. And um, she was great and gave me some, some great opportunities. And just been fortunate since then to land a, a couple more along the way. Yeah. And now you are the... Uh... I guess jack of all trades in this building. I, I, I do like to think so. Now, uh, the jack of all trades in the talent sense is very different than the actual valuable. Jack oh yeah, of all trades you're not getting behind the, the camera. Studio. Like <laughs> like our guy Drew Chestnut, for example, he could fix anything in the studio, and he's so much more valuable to the production than I am. <laughs> but as far as talent, quote unquote, which is a weird word used, as far as that is concerned, yeah, I've done commentary. I've done sideline reporting like I did today. We're chatting yeah. after the Poker Masters studio hosting right here on this desk for our break desk segments with, with Brent Hanks and, and Maria Ho. I've hosted, um, hosted a game show for Poker Go. So, yeah, I feel like I have done a little bit of, of everything. What's your favorite gig at Poker Go? That's a good – man, I love doing the sideline reporting um, just to be able to, to – Talk to the Better very best trapped players in that booth, in the world. Right? right, trapped with Brent, especially. <laughs> Imagine that for five or six hours. I, I really do love it all, and I'm not just saying that. But yeah, I I really like the sideline reporting and being able to talk with with either some of the best in the world or some of the most uh, entertaining personalities that that poker has to offer. And I can get out there and get out on the floor and get out in the field, and um, and it's it's a really cool opportunity for me, whether it be here or in an event like the the World Series main. Well, let's talk about these interviews. Uh, you've got to meet a lot of celebrities over the years, right? Come yeah, go. yeah, I guess. Good, yeah. Uh, which stand out to you? Was there anybody you're starstruck? Well, it, it's... I'm most starstruck still to this day, and I know this is an overall general celebrities question, but I'm still most starstruck by Ivy. Really? Yeah, out of anybody I've interviewed, it's like... You know, to, to, when you're nervous before you even ask somebody to do an interview, that kind of shows you what you're, you're feeling about them, mm-hmm. right? So I've interviewed plenty of people and former athletes and, and celebrities, and, and I've been nervous for the interview, sure, but there's nothing like the aura that Ivy presents. He said yeah. no to me both times, which is totally fine. He's Phil Ivy, you know, mm-hmm. he's going to say no more than he says yes. But that one time, we're going to get an interview with him. <laughs> um, and then selfishly, as far as celebrity interviews are concerned, uh, the Kevin Pollock interviews have been cool for me because he knew uh, who I was. 
And so that's like, oh, I feel really good yeah. now. I'm recognized by a celebrity, big time. You know, maybe I'll get the yeah. invites to the Hollywood home games. But I, I just think that was cool to recognize that there are there are so many poker fans, and and that of course uh, includes the celebrities. Yeah. So I, I, our interactions have always really stood out to me because I'm very appreciative of him uh, recognizing me <laughs> for sure. I've talked with Ivy for about five minutes total in my 20 years of poker. <laughs> that's unbelievable. It's, but that's it's still insane. higher than I may have expected. And it, that's like on 10 different occasions. So that's five minutes spread out over 10. Different, I think I interviewed him. I yeah. got three questions in before he stopped. And he only did that because Full Tilt made him. You know and what, what I mean? was the end like? He was just like, I'm out. I'm Thanks done. for the Thanks. time. Yeah, yeah, maybe, I, yeah. Sometimes <laughs> he hits me with, maybe we'll do it another time. I'm like, <laughs> I, we we'll probably won't. You yeah. can just be honest. But yeah. <laughs> Get a corner him after he wins something and is hostage. Even that, right? It, it has to be one of those situations <laughs> where he feels like he's forced to do it. Mm-hmm. If you're presenting him with the trophy, he'll give you a question or but two. But I also feel like he's aware of his mystique and the fact that it, uh, yeah, the legend fair. grows I if he doesn't fair. answer yeah. questions. Yeah. You know. You know. Anyway, uh, Kevin Pollock. I interviewed him and he he was great for half an hour after the interview. He just did impressions for me. It was great. <laughs> I awesome. it was one of the best interviews I ever did. Um, all right, so. We have to talk about your results as a player. Oh, I would love to. At this point, if you would have caught me like a month or two ago, I don't know. <laughs> but at this point, sure. Let's you do did it. mention those deep runs in the main event. You had mm-hmm. two, three, two. Of them? Yeah, two. two. I mean, these yes, yeah, sixtieth and two hundred and third, and this is back before you were uh, into poker go. And back to back years. I mean, I'm just throwing mm-hmm. that out there because you mentioned them, of course. Not how about do you, how do you money. not turn pro with uh, with those two question. deep runs? I probably sold sold off too much uh, <laughs> with those. Um, no, I did feel. I, I mean, I felt fortunate to run deep, of course, but I mean, I I also felt incredibly overmatched, especially uh, in 2015. I I remember that. So it it's like. I've got a lot of work to do and, and just for whatever reason didn't even think about putting in the work or studying. Now yeah. I love it. And I it was never a temptation all the time, back then. Yeah. Never really a temptation. It was more like, cool, this was an awesome experience. This was an unbelievable opportunity. Okay, back home to Texas now and we just go back to work. Was and, there and, something special you did in the main to get that far? Or is this... Really do you think there's I a mean, strategy I mean, to that tournament? That... Now, now that I do, I, I do think that that is the, of course, the most unique and without a doubt the best poker tournament in the world the structure is is so incredible and i've spoken about this before but the the emotional swings of that one if you can handle those you can handle a lot because when you win a pot in the main you're on top of the world it's the main event you just want a pot it feels amazing <laughs> might win the tournament when you lose a pot though it's it's like a dagger to the heart it's yeah. like you're, my my dream is crying and you just lost like a 12 big blind pot you have 200 bigs in your stack or something like that so I, I do think being able to ride that roller coaster and not just tilt it. I've seen so many, so <laughs> many people just punt it off in the main event because they're tilted. So I do think there's a, a slow and steady wins the race type approach that could work in the main. Um, that did work for me back in 2014, 2015. And, and that I think overall led to my deep runs and then of course running well i don't think i I ran like absurdly hot um sun run but i definitely ran well of course i did to get to get that far how much better are you now having been through the process of of osmosis Mm -hmm. (laughs) just absorbing all these killers in this room every day uh compared to back then like yeah it's a great question it's night and day It's, it's just not even close i mean i've I've been meaning to do this to look back at some of the hands that I played in 2014, <laughs> 2015, and just laugh at them. Now, a lot to be fair, a lot of these guys would laugh at hands that they played oh, uh, seven or eight years ago, also because the game continues to evolve. You study, you get better. But like you said, uh, uh, my job is to watch the best players in the world, hand after hand, not just the highlights. Yeah, but every single hand. That's naturally going to make me better. I'm going to sit by a great analyst. Yes, I will give Brent some credit. And, and Brent Hanks, or it may be Marie Ho, or it may be Jamie Kerstetter, and get their analysis. Again, not just the highlight version, but every single hand. And then you know, I'm so passionate about the game, I study on the side also. So all of that is going to combine Man. yeah, to make me a better player. Like, how could yeah. it not? Because I'm so engrossed in it all, it, partly to become a better broadcaster and partly to become a better player. Yeah, well, it showed, obviously. Let's talk about the results. Uh, last 
Halloween <laughs> when the World Series was going on. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that special fall version. Yeah. I like that one. You finished fourth in a 1K there at the Double Stack event. 160 grand. Woo! 160 grand. Another one I probably sold too much of. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that, that was a wild ride. I mean, when you're entering day four of a poker tournament, and it's at the World Series of Poker. That feels that feels pretty yeah. special, and and that was a special run to say the least. I mean, it, so much um, stands out to me about that event. It, it was a, a crazy wild ride, and very appreciative of, the, of that one. And then, of course, uh, just uh, last month. It's been a month. Huh? Yeah, that's why I said last month. Yeah, sure. I've been I've been a little cold since that that big uh, one case and. To go back to the 1K double stack, you know, they didn't run it this year. I think yeah. they were just too overwhelmed by my final table last yeah, year. Yeah, they were just they, like, like, how could we top this in 2020 to or 2022? Excuse me, we have to retire this event. <laughs> Those are just my thoughts. Double um, stack. Yeah, that did have a short life. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, a month ago, you go over to the Venetian, you win mm-hmm. the 1K over there. Another hundred thousand dollars in your pocket. I had a little bit more of that one, so that was good. That's good. Um, but but and really, you are the trophy holder at the end right? yeah that's yeah. gotta feel better and that was really good because that's just what i was going to say the money is awesome of course and i'll never say that it's not and that it's <laughs> not a factor and that it's not nice but to win a poker tournament especially after you work so hard at something that feels truly uh special to, to win that trophy that man that's that's something else and, and to 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 battle and to ride that roller coaster, that day two of one of those, that was just a two-day tournament that that usually brings. Um, that's something that'll stand out to me for a while. And then getting heads up, knowing, be- mainly because Brent and I talk about it on almost every broadcast when we get to heads up, and Brent will be like, what's your record, heads up? Jeff, just curious. I'm like, I'm, I'm one in seven. So I've gotten to the final two, eight times, mostly in very small stakes tournaments, but still... I'm one in seven. Yeah. He's like, oh, one in seven. And Always so, be closing. Right, right. And so um, I get to heads up in this one. I have a slight chip lead. And I'm like, I got this. I lose the chip lead. And I'm like, here we go. One and eight. And I'm just going to hear it from Brent again and again Man. and again. But was able to pull through and, and win that tournament and win that trophy. That was yeah. a cool trophy, by the way. Have you seen that trophy? It's a, got the lion yeah. on top of you the... You took a great winner photo as well. Oh, thank, I mean, that was just pure joy, yeah. pure emotion, man. I was like, like I was tearing up afterwards. But most it people just... don't do that. Anymore. Right. It's like, right. It, we had, there was a joke, I think Tom Dwan won a Triton a few months back, and he looked like, yeah. like he's so miserable. <laughs> Being kidnapped or something. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, um, it's, just the, it's just pure joy and elation for me. You know, everybody's different, of course, but I wasn't going to even try to hide to look cool. the emotion. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That, that that's whole like, I, I do this mind. every week. Right. I, I yeah, no so big often. deal. Whatever. Oh, you Here's want my to take a picture photo. of this one? Like, okay. this is the coolest thing ever. Thank <laughs> you for taking a picture of me. All right, so you're going to play a lot more? I'd like to. I mean, I have the perfect balance right now, right? Because I can work, you know, two-ish weeks every month, and yeah. that opens up the other two weeks to to travel and to play or to play tournaments here in Vegas. Uh, so it does, it does certainly open the door for sure. And I think the better you do in poker – the better you just want to get at the yeah. game. So I'm like um, studying even more now than I, I was before. And then, of course, like we talked about just earlier, the, the job helps as well. So I just feel like I want to I want to work, and then when I can't work, I play. There you so go. So it's kind of perfect for me. Work hard, play hard. Yeah. we got some rapid-fire questions Let's to do close it, it out. Um, all right. Best shot you ever took? It doesn't have to be poker. Oh, oh, I love that. Love the question. And I mean, that was a shock emailing Dan Gotti out of the blue, right? Yeah, I, I, <laughs> think, I think you would just have to point to, this is what I always would, would go to with this kind of a question, was moving out to Vegas. Just an overall life shot. Because yeah. there was a chance, right, that I would come out here and just have nothing to do. Like, Dan never responds Sarah never responds at poker news. But maybe I try to like start my own stuff, or life would have taken a, a completely different path. Yeah. And so I, I think that, as far as shot taking, uh, for me is by far and away number one. Like I can't think of anything that comes close. And in poker, it's probably 
you know, just firing off too much of a bankroll in a poker tournament. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> Um, if you started a band or other musical act, what instrument would you play, and what would your band name be? I'd be the voice, man. Come on, yeah. I'd be I'd be that lead front singer. Man. I'd be I'd have to be the front man. Yeah. And uh, what would my band name be? Um, <laughs> I I'd, I'd probably be like a probably, you know I always look for ways to to promote to our shows. So I'd probably just call the band No Gamble No Future. <laughs> That's a good uh, name which, for a band which, too. Yeah, which does air Tuesday night on every Tuesday night on Poker Goat. Just saying. Shameless plugs. Sh- I, I can work those. <laughs> I was going to put all those day. in the beginning and the end, but you I, got I, know, I know you were you going in the middle, them, but might as well get some middle ones in also. <laughs> um, biggest pot you ever won or lost? Let's see. I you know I don't play high as far as cash games go. So biggest pot. I've played on some stream cash games. I've played in some uh, two five games in Texas. And I'd say the oh, you know, I take that back because I was on Poker After Dark in 2019, and I think we played 2550. And there was one pot where I got the chips in versus Brandon Cantu, and it was maybe 12k per person, so about a 25k pot. Yeah. Now, I had such a small piece of myself that it probably equates to a lot of these two five pots that I had been playing uh, on stream games. But the blood was pumping. Blood was pumping for sure. And then to be on Poker After Dark, <laughs> yeah. which I'd watched my whole life, um, <laughs> that, was, that was incredible. Got it in with Kings against Ace King. Brandon had the Kings. He chose to run it once, flopped an Ace. There you it's go. It's an easy game. Biggest pot I lost, I went bananas with the seven deuce. Last time in, what city were we in? We are in Dallas. We were at Texas Card House, Dallas. Had a seven deuce game on, and I tried to check raise with the seven deuce right into a full house. No big deal. <laughs> <laughs> Did not get through. Did not work. So, that yeah, that work would out. be the biggest win and loss. What was your worst job before broadcasting, I guess? Did you have any team oh, jobs? Oh, yeah, I was like, what, when I was in high school, my very first job, I don't even think it's, it counts as an internship because I got technically paid for it was at the frisco texas chamber of commerce and just sitting there and filing and filing and filing some That's more so dull and it was it was eight hours a day five days a week oh during the summer you know all my friends are like just having a blast having a good time um and yeah it was so that definitely that definitely stands out could you make that door creak any slower? Just, just as we're wrapping up, <laughs> this guy just has to walk in again. Yeah, I it's, got seven minutes of rapid-fire questions. This is Brent, by here. the way. Yeah, well, it's well, okay. Well, that didn't work. We'll let them the know we have an audience. Now, now this man I can let interrupt because that's George Maxwell. He's, you remember one of the, the superstars I was talking about before on the crew? The jack of all trades? That's, that's yeah. this gentleman, the guy who could do anything. He's much more important to the broadcast. All right, George. Yeah, bullshit. It's all you. Okay, thank you. <laughs> right. If you guys didn't get this, he said it's all me. All right, see you, George. <laughs> can leave that part in also. What was your largest non-poker wager? Um, I, I think it probably has to be on a Super Bowl. It's probably dusting it off with Brent on some wrong side. <laughs> um, so it's probably that. I remember uh, getting involved with a bookie in um, like 10th grade and having like $200 on a game. So as far as... Biggest bet compared to net worth when I maybe had two hundred dollars <laughs> lying around. I, I think it. I think it'd be that. Lost that bet. Was had the bookie ask, also in tenth grade? <laughs> I, the, the bookie might have been. Yeah, had to ask the parents for money. Tell them I was using a bookie. So ever since then, I've kind of pumped the brakes on the sports betting days. Yeah, that is a. Uh, that's a tough conversation. They weren't particularly uh, pleased. Brutal. Okay, who are the four players on your poker Mount Rushmore? I think. I think you absolutely, when talking about Mount Rushmore, have to go with Doyle. I think he's, I think he just should be a consistent presence in in everybody's. So that that I'm I'm sure on. I think because of his success at the World Series, compared to everybody else, that you have to go with the 16-time <laughs> World Series of Poker bracelet winner, Phil Hellmuth. I think for all that he's done for the game. And to be able to compete back then and still now with the high rollers, with these fields that you see here, that you have to go with Daniel Negreanu. And I think for those very same reasons, 
You might think I'm going Ivy. I'm going to go with Eric Seidel. That's what I was going to say. I'm going to go with Eric Seidel. Because Eric is always left off these lists, and I, right. and he's still here. It's and how 30 old plus is he? years. And he's still he's crushing? He's 62. That's it's insane. 30 plus years. Yeah. I, I admire, you know, everybody who listened to those four would probably say, Ivy, Ivy, Ivy. And I admire what Ivy's done for sure. And he's done yeah. it for, what, 20 years or yeah. so, which is incredible. But... More than 30 for Seidel, always staying at the top or towards the top of the game. That's that's absurd. And, and, so, and there are other 62-year-olds who are in his group yeah. who are still playing poker and yeah. still maybe even winning. Yeah, for sure. But they're not playing super high rollers right. against, against these the best wizards. in the world. Yeah. 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 It's, it's amazing. <clears throat> Who's yours? I mean, that? Seidel's definitely on there. I think you, you, you can't ignore Phil's bracelets even though he gets – you know, right, the cash game criticism. Right, that doesn't mean I would take Phil in a, in a field against these guys, yeah. and, but I think he belongs on Mount Rushmore. I, I guess it could de- de- uh, depends on how much do you factor in off the felt contributions. Sure. You know sure. what I mean? Uh, yeah, and my, that's I why guess. I have Daniel in there because I think he's been such a good overall yeah. ambassador for, for the game. Yeah, you can't argue the eyeballs he has either. His exactly. YouTube bl- blog it was six hundred thousand viewers or, right. or subscribers, I should say. And you. I wouldn't even need to tell you. I could just hand you a graph of like our Poker Go viewership numbers, and you would be able to point out what final tables Daniel was at. Wow, sure. He's, he moves the needle that much. Yeah, huh? yeah, I think he does. I okay. say that. I, I don't think I have any access to our viewership numbers, but <laughs> <laughs> I assume so. How about that? Okay, if you could pick the uh, entertainment for the Super Bowl halftime show, who would you pick? Mm, entertainment for Super Bowl halftime show. Do you go selfish, or do you try to please the masses? I would probably... I would probably be selfish. I would go, and people would just hate me for this, but I'm thinking, like, if you put Adele on the Super Bowl stage on that kind of production... She wouldn't and do just, it. She's terrified. If you could convince Adele to do it. <laughs> yeah, Adele's terrified of the 3,000-person audience in Vegas, clearly, with those yeah. delays. But if you could put Adele or Celine in her prime, I know that's cheating a little bit. We could time travel. Um, but if we could time travel and do something, and if we're really time traveling, then I would do the Beatles. Then a Beatles halftime show would just yeah. shut it down. Like, we don't even need to play. They never even got to play Super with Bowl. a proper sound system. I know. Imagine. <laughs> imagine that. Yeah. Imagine the Beatles in their prime halftime of the 2023 Super Bowl. That's, that'd be sick. <laughs> yeah, that, that would be the winner. Um do you have a – oh, who was your celebrity crush growing up? Growing up, it was uh, probably – probably Minka Kelly for, from Friday Night Lights. Okay. That was probably when I was in college. And then oh, since, I imagine that show was huge. Yeah, yeah. That, that, that show like really, really blew up. And then since then, it's definitely – tell me if you've heard this name before. Pia Toscano. No. Former American Idol finalist. So counts as far as celebrity Mm -hmm. uh, is concerned and and can sing and is very, very attractive. Are you single? Uh, Yes. Put out a shout out to Pia. Maybe Pia's a big listener. You know, unfortunately, Pia is is not single. But if if Pia, (laughs) I wish Pia the very best in her relationship, of course. Pia, dump him. But this is Jeff Platt we're talking about. That is true. Two deep runs in the main. Don't know if you heard earlier. Yeah. And very famous. Venetian winner. Yeah, and Venetian MSPT winner. Have a trophy. He's on TV no big, no big deal. regularly. Don't mean to brag. Yeah, I'd probably, I'd probably go with Pia. Great okay. suit collection. Got, got, got good suits. By the way, how many suits do you own? What would you guess? I think, wait, let me think of the, the number approximate. Okay. Okay. I'm, I'm just counting top right and bottom now. combinations. Yeah, 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 add yeah, them yeah. all up. I'm sure right. you have some mix and matches. No, I really go. It's really just one oh, suit. So yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay. You need, I think you would need at least six. Mm-hmm. In my opinion. So I'm going to guess you have 10. I have 13, but but to your credit, only like seven-ish are in the rotation okay. nowadays. So do, you I might, a, do you have a fat suit for when you go a little too hard during the holidays? Um, I guess I do have some bigger <laughs> fitting shirts, come to think of it. But the suits are all the same size. So I'd be in a little trouble if I put on a ton of weight. Yeah. yeah you'd just be like, I, we have nothing <laughs> like I'd go from 13 suits to zero. Why is this Jeff is in sweats? Good. Yeah. He's wearing poker go sweatshirts all week. Um, okay. Who is your celebrity doppelganger? Or have people ever told you you look like somebody growing up? Mm. Um, unfortunately, I shouldn't say unfortunately. The one I got the most was either... 
uh, Matthew Broderick, okay. Ferris Bueller, yeah, yeah, or uh, a white Kumar. A white Kumar? Yeah. Do you see that at all? No. Stapes' joke is, uh, doesn't Jeff Platt look like if Harold and Kumar were the same person? <laughs> Which is kind of funny. <laughs> Which does get, oh, kind of get me. Oh, I was thinking time. of Harold. Okay. Oh, okay. So now Kumar, do you, Duh, see, do you okay. see it? Yeah. I guess. So I got yeah. that. I've gotten Jake We're talking Gyllenhaal. about Cal Penn. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Yeah, I couldn't remember his name, so I went with Okay, a white Cal Penn. Yeah. Okay. I've gotten Gyllenhaal, like, twice, but that obviously will stand out because, like, who doesn't want to get to I think I like, like the white Cal Penn better than Matthew Broderick. I don't see Matthew okay. Broderick, but maybe young Matthew Broderick. Yeah, maybe when I was younger, I haven't younger seen too. him. Uh... I, got, I got Mario Lopez, like, once or twice. Too. That is such a diverse group of people. Yeah, it's like, I, like, like I don't get with these comparisons. <laughs> That's I'll hilarious. Take, uh, I'll take a couple of them. Do you collect anything? You know, I go back and forth on sports cards. So, like, I was really into it when I was a kid. And then got really into it during the pandemic mm-hmm. when, I, when it started to kind of blow up again. Yeah. And so that's when I collect now. I've, I've been kind of off it, but still have probably. Do you go down to Jared Blesnick's cards. store? Yeah, Bles and I have <laughs> talked about sports cards plenty. I've been, the, I've been to Legacy. Yeah, and I've, I've donked off on some, some boxes. <laughs> I've taken some shots to refer to. Another there you go. Are boxes. you superstitious at all? No, I'm, I'm, I'm really not. Like, I don't. You know, I try to do the same. I try to have the same kind of routine when going into a poker tournament in the day of, but I don't like think, oh, if I step on this line, then I'm totally screwed, or if I use fifty dollar bills, then there's no chance <laughs> that I'm going to win. No, I don't have any of those superstitions. Any phobias? I, f- I mean, phobia is a bit of a strong word, but I really don't like rats. Like, yeah. really don't. He's just not a rats guy. And I know that's not like a hot take. Oh, who does like rats? But, like, really, really do not. I have a friend like who rats. keeps them as pets, and I don't he keeps like keeps rats it. as pets? She. She keeps and rats And she's as a pets. veterinarian. Yeah, I want it. <laughs> you have to be quiet for three more minutes, and then you could take them. All right. You have any phobias, Brent? Yeah. I went with We're rats. going to have Brent on the podcast soon. No. Brent None? doesn't do podcasts. I, I do the publicity tour. He said he was going to do He's this one, busy. and then well, ghosted me. Good luck. Good luck if you can get them. It's you called know? Poker Stories, and it's the oh, number it's, it's the it's number one podcast, podcast on earth. No other podcast no, exists. Any near death experiences? <laughs> um, no. Sorry for the boring answer, but I've no. No knock, on, knock on wood. I mean, I did when in second grade playing baseball, get hit by a pitch once on the finger, was able to tough it out and keep going. <laughs> that's about it. You don't even get a free base for that. The hands death. part of the ball. Yeah, yeah, I mean, the, sure. <laughs> the bat. That's funny. Um, all right. We just have a few more and then I'll let you go. What's a famous movie that you're embarrassed you haven't seen? Um... Famous movie than uh, probably Apocalypse Now. Okay, that's a pretty famous one. I would yeah, say. Yeah, you can right? skip it. It's I can. It's slow. Oh, it's okay. a little weird. Okay, then I no, would just go. Great. With, <laughs> I think I think I would go. Uh, I think I'd go with that one. I haven't seen that. Every time people bring that up, I'm like, yep, mm-hmm. yep. What game show would you like to be on, or would you do well on? Ooh, I would. It like... could also be a past game show. That's not on the air. Oh anymore. well. There's a new version of it now. I'd love to do Press Your Luck okay. with the whammies. No, no whammies, whammies. No whammies. whammies. Stop. Yeah. Um, you just want either a luck-based new version game? Or old ver- yeah, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> I think I'd be too nervous on TV to have to uh, answer questions. It's not going to be but, Jeopardy. But, but I would love to host really any game show that's out there. And Brent, Brent just told me that we're bringing back the big blind for season two on Poker Go. Oh. So be, okay, he didn't say that. No, he didn't say that. But, Is that a, not an exclusive for this podcast? But, I promise you it's <laughs> yeah, a one, a one and done. It's like how do you top season one, right? So that's why we're not. Yeah, I mean, yeah. the only reason we're not bringing it back is because Norman Chad won. That's yeah. true. That's true. That's a that's a, probably a good reason to uh to end it. All right, we end the podcast the same way every time with a question from the random question generator. Love it. What was your fondest memory of high school? Well. No, I'm just kidding. I'm too bad. I don't have any of those memories. Um, fondest memory of high school. Were you a popular kid? 
like a like above the the median, I would okay. say. So like, <laughs> kind of, sort of, well liked by everybody, but not everybody knew who I was, which is totally fine. I think it was, uh, yeah, I think it was probably. Um, we did this. Uh, this sounds stupid. He's gonna crush me for this. Um, <laughs> so you know, the, you you have Mrs. America, right? But you don't have Mr. America. So our high school did a Mr. Uh, West. <laughs> this was Plano West. I went to senior high school, and I would say doing that. That's some. That's did the you memory host or that compete? stands out. I competed. <laughs> I was choir's representative in that <laughs> competition, and I advanced to. Like the semifinals or something. People are like, oh, he probably won that. No, I didn't win. Who won? Shout him out. I, I don't remember who won. Who was the hot guy in your high school? I don't, I, I don't What's remember. he doing now? Yeah, that's a good question. <laughs> Bro. <laughs> yeah. uh, so that's, I guess that's fondest memory. Yeah. yeah. This that's is just what Connie's, Connie's yeah. employees call him, yeah. Mr. West. I'm going to hear about Mr. West on the broadcast <laughs> forever. Well, Mr. West, uh, I'd like to thank you for being on the podcast. You got it, man. Thanks for having me. Really enjoyed talking to you. That is it. That is the show. Thank you once again to Jeff. Uh, He had a long week at the Poker Masters, but he still made the time for the podcast, which is appreciated. If you want more Jeff, you can find hours and hours of him, including the new show, No Gamble, No Future, at Poker Go. And if you don't have Poker Go, well, I don't know what to tell you other than that is a mistake. I mean, can you even call yourself a poker fan if you don't subscribe to Poker Go? You can also follow Jeff on Twitter at Jeff Platt or follow us at Card Player Media. And if you want more poker stories, then make sure you subscribe. If you really, really like the show, then please show it with a five star rating and review. Then let us know you did so by sending us an email to pokerstories at cardplayer.com. Until the next one, thanks for listening. By now, you've heard about Global Poker, one of the fastest growing online card rooms available in the US and Canada today. So what's stopping you from trying it out? Global Poker is a safe and secure social poker site that uses their own patented sweepstakes model. Signing up is easy. You can use Google, Facebook, or just an email address. You can always play for free on Global Poker, but you can also buy gold coins for additional play, which will earn sweeps coins that can be redeemed for real cash to a bank account, Skrill account, or even as a gift card. Get a free 5,000 gold coins when you sign up right now at GlobalPoker.com.